guys, welcome to this video. I'm more than excited to say that I gave a guitar clinic at MI. For the ones that don't know, I graduated from there and now I went as an artist to talk about touring and my career and all that. This is the first episode out of many. Subscribe so you get the notifications for the other episodes. There's a lot of topics that are gonna be covered. Let's get on the video. Thank you. Thank you for coming here, guys. Thank you so much. It, it means a lot. Thank you, Travis. Um, as I was saying earlier, it's just surreal, you know, coming here as a student and just a few years later, just come back and share experience. So it, it, it means a lot. I attended MI on 2015 and graduated on 2017. It was just the guitar performance program. And I actually had a really good time. People think like it's just knowing people, but you have to put in the work. I try to get the most out of it, out of all the OCs that I could be in. Like I would create my own schedule. I would be with most teachers during the day. And I think that helped me a lot to learn like different points of view and their experiences as well as, you know, not only music wise. So I'm currently sponsored by PRS Guitars, Elixir Strings, EMG Pickups, 64 Audio for the in-ears and mono cases. After I graduated, I started touring five days later after graduating. And I know it sounds surreal. I, I didn't think like that would happen. Sometimes we just get carried away with, oh, uh, I'm gonna be touring and I'm gonna play with this artist or that doesn't matter who it is. But you j you just have the eager, or at least my experience was, I was like, yes, I'll do it, whatever. Like, it just came, it's the right thing. And uh, yeah, life taught me that it's not supposed to be like that. But you know, it's, it's something that you gotta learn. So a long tour, there was no breaks. And at the beginning I was like, okay, I auditioned, I got this gig, uh, I think, I'm all set. But I don't think that you stop learning. You Yes, you can apply the things in music theory, but there's always much more to learn, you know? I, I am actually from Mexico City, so I had to move back there. I wanted to apply for the work visa. I don't know, like, is there any international students? No way, okay, wh where are you from? Nice. Looking for like advice on like the O-1 visas. You, you've heard of that. Now. I'm for sure. So honestly, I got denied the first time and it was like a heartbreak, literally. Um, that was after like my first tour because once you graduate, you can like work for a year. Then I had to go back to Mexico and I was trying to get things done. And then I was trying to like move back and forth from Mexico to here. And I was doing like small gigs, you know, but I knew that my time was running out. Then I get a call from a producer uh, and then he's like, hey, we really need a guitarist. And I'm like, why are you calling me? <laughs> if you know, like there's a lot of like great guitarists out there. So he's like, yeah, we saw your videos, this and that. And uh, can you can you send an audition? Because I was not in Mexico, so I could not go somewhere. And I was like, sure. So I had to record myself prepared that I'm, I'm actually going to show you like a few songs that I had to prepare. And uh, well, I just try to do my best, send them, and they like them. So I think that was like one of the biggest changes in my career because I, I got out of my comfort zone. It was a musical, but is anybody here into musicals? You? Okay, what, what, what's your favorite one? Okay, anybody else? No? I was the same. I hated musicals. I thought they were lame. Sorry, not, 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 not for me. Okay. Yeah, it was not my thing. So I started listening to the music because before that I was like, no, I'm out of here. And I think that's a mistake that we all do and you guys could do, so please don't. I really liked that it was super dynamic. So it kept changing keys and time signatures. And at some point I honestly didn't feel prepared because, you know, uh, I didn't play an LPW that was like that. <laughs> uh, I listened to the music and the, the first track I was like, holy shit. Wait, can I curse? Can I cuss here? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> well, it's just that sometimes people record and they're like, don't do that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I fell in love with it and I, I thought, oh my gosh, that's gonna be easy. Well, don't think that either because nothing is as easy as it sounds. So uh, the musical was Jesus Christ Superstar. 
Uh, it was supposed to be two months in a theater. It ended up being over a year and a half, and we toured all over Mexico. And, you know, like, I started here playing for 10, 12 people, and with that musical, I ended up playing for 30 to 60,000 people. So it was literally a big change. So you guys tell me, would you say no again if somebody tells you that? Are you into musicals now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so at, at the end of the day, maybe it's not your last goal, but you know I, I, that's going to give you experience. Uh, so yeah, I've been touring with different artists after that. I started meeting more singers and musicians. We, we did d different festivals. That's pretty much the, the glamour that people know about. But I, I would like to get into details about like how that happened and everything that's behind the scenes, you know, because I, I don't think that much people uh, talk about those things. Enough talking for now. I'm just going to show the musical thing that made me fall in love with that, uh, with that play. Notice there's like a big orchestra so that's also like exciting because you learn about dynamics you learn about you know how to blend in with uh like more than just a rock band which there's nothing wrong with that but this helps you like grow as a musician the musicals they let you uh read the music so that was really helpful because otherwise I'd, i don't know what i've done like memorizing that like play uh yeah like fuck that <laughs> um so i was like how the hell am I going to do this? Um, so it, it's all about trying to get the knowledge from school. But let's be real. Is there any class here that teaches you, oh, yeah, be a musician for music theater? No, no. You just have to try to get the resources. Like, even if you didn't learn it somewhere, like, go online. Like, YouTube can do a lot of things. So you're going to be following... The, the rhythm guitar is going to be playing this. While the lead guitar is doing... It's going to change to 3-4. 1, 2, 3, again. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then four, four. Thank you. So uh, it was kind of hard, like, uh, counting out loud, but uh, I hope that you got, like, the, the grip of it. I don't know if you guys could hear me or, like, follow along the, the, the pictures. Pretty much, like, you need to be, like, counting. And in that part, like... Uh, I need to like stay quiet, right? Like there's a lot of parts that you're not gonna be part of, but you can't miss a measure. Cause if you, if you look somewhere else, you're fucked. And unfortunately it happened to me. Yeah, but it was not as bad. But you know, you just have to be careful on that. And for example, the, there's the, like a buildup that has the riff like, Seven, eight, and then two, four. I really like that because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, one, two, and then you go back to the four, four. But that that took a year and a half of my of my life and my career, as I said. But it was totally worth it, and um, I could apply different things that I heard from teachers that I didn't quite took serious, you know, like uh, triads and stuff that I was talking about earlier. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but yeah, that, that's it. The click is going to be your best friend. So I know that most teachers are going to tell you like, oh, you got to practice with the click. You got to do this and that. 
But I were like, oh, who needs the click? Oh, we have a drummer. Oh, this and that. Oh, yeah. And when you're practicing with the click, you're just going to be playing like um, scales that go over, like up and down. And that'll be fine, right? Like, okay, I'm, I'm set. I don't need the click anymore. Or like, you get tired of it. Well, here, it's definitely going to be needed. Usually in musicals, the band or the musicians are not on stage. Like, usually they're under the stage. But in this one, they wanted to make it dynamic, like in, in London. Uh, so the musicians, we were part of the of the cast, you know? So we were uh, on the sides in different platforms and containers. So they opened the, the doors of the containers and uh, we were just interacting with the public. But you need to know that part. And then once they close them, then you go back to your seat and like you can play standing up if you want and read. It's all about reading. Like, I think... In school, I didn't think I was going to read a lot in music because I was just going to be like, oh, I'm going to record my stuff. Who cares about reading? But this definitely proved me wrong. So I had to prepare hours and hours and like read it again and like listen to it again and listen to it again. Um, so, yeah. Do you have questions about that? No, that would have been like a nightmare, more than it was already. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, they, they gave us a, um, a track with the click already, so you can start following, you know, like the the the, the music sheets, right? So um, that helped a lot, so you have an idea. But before they recorded it, they gave us uh, like examples from the musical that was from Lo John Legend. He did that in, in here with Alice Cooper. They did this musical so we we use that as like guidance before they gave us like the track from from the place it was quite a challenge uh to be able to feel confident with that and i think that's another thing that we struggle with the most it doesn't matter if you're a guitarist or like any any musician we're like uh sometimes we just don't feel confident like oh my gosh what if this is not for me what if i'm not gonna make it what if you know like they made a mistake of like choosing me and i that happens to all of us. It still happens sometimes to me, you know? But um, I think it's something that you have to learn how to control and be like, okay, so I went to a music school for a reason. So, like, I'm I'm going to, like, try to make things right. I, I try to, you know, um, think of everybody uh, everybody's experience and try to put it all together, you know? So uh, even if you don't know what you're going to be doing, like, not knowing is totally fine. And uh, I should listen to myself saying this. <laughs> so um, you just have to like try to figure out um, what, like remember what you learned and also um, ask for help. It's totally fine if you don't know things and you ask for help. It doesn't matter if it's like a coworker, like a, like a classmate or anything, like a, even a teacher. Like, now that you're in school still, you can, like, if you get a gig or something, feel free to ask them. That's why they're here for. Uh, it would be different if, like, you were in the middle of nowhere with no contacts at all, right? So get the most out of the school. You have the best staff that could help you and guide you through that. So a lot of themes in the, in the musical repeat, but I learned a lot of dynamics. So I'm just going to play a little... Uh, part of it I'm not gonna be playing all the songs nor the musical because that musical was like two hours and a half but um, it definitely helped me to blend in with with a lot of musicians I've never been on stage with you know like an orchestra has like 11 22 34 people like it doesn't matter and like you you need to learn how to like I don't know if the, the terms like step back you know because we tend to be like oh <laughs> Right, and like we're just trying to get the bass note and then sometimes the lead. And it's just too much. Like I learned with this that it's okay if you even have one or two notes, right? So you could have the... And then the dynamic that throughout the song is going to start doing... I like that it, it, it's not exaggerated it's literally you learn the dynamics and 
sharing that with everybody. It's like you feel that the stage is super powerful, but it definitely like put in perspective like, oh, teachers were right, which they usually are. But sometimes we're like, I don't need that. Like, who cares about try it? Yes. <laughs> and um, I think we just like uh, look past that. And in this song, there's another part that goes um, different chords, but I cannot step over the piano and I cannot step over like the horn players or anything. So I was supposed to do something like E flat, C, and then on the A7, I used to do the... So putting it all together, you need to know like the triads like in different parts of the fretboard, like Dan Gilbert used to say. <laughs> uh, so it, it used to be like this. Uh. That was pretty much the first episode of my guitar clinic at Musicians Institute. Thank you so much for your support. I hope that you enjoyed it just like I did. There's more episodes coming up, so stay tuned. Subscribe so you get the notifications whenever they come out. Follow me also on social media, it's over here. Thank you so much for your support, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.